owners deserve justice too. The thrust of justice has always been to defend the accused, and this has um, some importance, at least where there is the government uh, bringing an action against a citizen. But more and more, we're looking at government policy that is one-sided and we justify this a lot of times because it's promoting a social agenda we tend to agree with um but what really is justice is is justice about pursuing a social agenda? Is it about the freedom of people from their own consequences, um, helping them to avoid accountability? In this talk, we look at justice as based on ownership. Ownership is based on authorship. We don't own what we do not create, and we do not have claims on what we did not create. That which is created by others is inalienable, as is what we create. This appears to create a lot of problems, and it does within the conventional way of thinking. The conventional view is that there is personal, private, and public ownership. Personal ownership does not take a lot of discussion because we all tend to feel that we have to own what we need for personal use. This is not to say that this is totally true, but it's of um, such minor importance or the issues are rendered moot by the f fact of necessity. We do need to live and we do have an equal right to what we need for our own life. If we don't have that right, nobody has that right and nobody has any means of living. So we're going to assume that we do have an equal right to personal use items. It's when you get into private ownership and public ownership that the issues really come to the fore. There is a um, incremental step between personal ownership and private ownership or ownership of goods for personal use and ownership of goods for um, commercial use, what might be called capital ownership. Capital ownership is ownership of assets that have commercial value. The problem with the idea of private ownership is that it extends from a person who can, say, do carpentry, helping out a friend in exchange for some service or item that the other person has. So when we get into barter, occasional barter or informal trades this and this was what initially was the case a person who could make arrowheads or baskets or whatever could hunt 
tended to specialize more in that and trade his products for what other um, community members could do or had. And again, we tend to slide over this because it seems of minor importance and of minor differences from just personal use items. But the more we drift from personal use, the more serious the issues with our ideas of ownership get. We go from it being okay to look after someone else's dogs while you they look after our children on another day to someone opening up a school or claiming a vast track of forest or of waterfall and we excuse this on the ground that the person bought it or he was the first to find it or he's added value to it and is creating products or services for other people the thing is that this isn't really how we feel because if we did we wouldn't need governments to authorize, regulate, and and protect this, but we do. Despite libertarian arguments, it's very, very hard to imagine someone owning a waterfall or a, um, say, General Motors without a government to, to protect them. So there is something wrong in that kind of ownership that I think we all recognize, even though we may not be able to put our finger on it or uh, put it in so many words. But if we understand ownership as authorship, it becomes apparent what the problem is. Nobody created, not on this road, a waterfall or a forest or even a painting, we may paint the painting and we may build the factory, but all that raw material does not belong to us because it was not created by us. And this is a dilemma that it has not been solved up to uh, the present, and that is if I take a block of wood and I carve out a figurine, that figurine as a creation belongs to me. Nobody can argue that. But the wood I did not create. So I've created a value, I've added value to the wood. But do I have a right to um, gain benefit from that wood? And this becomes more apparent when we get into large factories, waterfalls, and even mines. If somebody finds a gold gold mine or gold in a river, whatever, and mines this gold, he's put some labor into it, but he didn't create the gold or the mine. How much, how much capital belongs to the author, and how much not does not. Um, and of course, this argument goes down into factory owners themselves, where the factory owner is said to have invested his capital, and so he owns the profits, and. We can see this in many cases, that there is some justification. But in other cases, the argument is rather tenuous. Somebody writes a software program, has created something, and then all from that time forward, he reaps off this one creation. But how much labor 
did he actually put in it? And this is an issue that impacts the labor theory of value, which states that we are entitled to the value of our labor and the price of a product or service is equal to the value that was put into it. But if we take that as a, as a, a valid argument, how do we extract the value of the labor? Who says what the value of the labor is that we put into a thing? And we can see that this is a serious problem when we get to government because governments are paid to build roads, schools, defend the nation and so on, but they're not doing any of that. They are getting other people to do it. Other people are doing the work and they are paying for this, paying those who do the work with other people's money. So they're basically a kind of brokerage. So what labor and what value are they providing? Who owns the nation, the, the assets of a nation? These are, these are questions of justice. So the, these are questions that uh, Mr. Anik, um deals with, and we have a solution to these, which is a total restructuring of society based on justice. But the point we're making here is that to have justice, we need to have justice for owners. Until we have justice for owners, there is no justice. And without that justice for owners, we cannot have a just society. We need communities of justice. And so I encourage you to look further at the um, our website and our blog posts and our videos and um, podcasts for more information and consider the importance of fighting for or joining in the fight for justice for owners and if you're an owner and you find it unjust that the pie you bake is being divided by those who did not help. And this is an old, old problem. The ones who plant and reap and process are not always the ones who get to eat and enjoy. And we think this is a serious problem, one that's not been really addressed ever. And we encourage you to uh, think about this and consider having it addressed seriously. <laughs>